Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Alrighty, pack one, pick one. What do we have? Heartless Act is pretty efficient removal. Sir Eleonora, a nice two for one. Secure the critics if we wanted to force an aggressive deck. I guess Heliod's a decent payoff for the life gain deck. I haven't tried a life gain deck yet. So that could be fun. Yeah, field could also be okay to build around for some ramp strategy. Although there's not that many ways to find lands. There's like Golos, but that's about it. Eh, let's try Heliod and see if we can make a nice life gain deck. No real amazing life gain synergy cards. I guess like Revival Revenge could be okay. Lamia is playable but a little slow and we're not gonna get much value from the graveyard. Uh, best cards overall, like Pyromancer in the blue-red deck that can draw cards can be quite strong. Phoenix for Monoret had we taken Secure the Critics pack one. Scavenging Goose is always decent too, has a bit of synergy with Heliod, but typically the life gain deck is black-white and not green-white. Could go in a few different directions. I mean, Ooze is just a solid card as well. There's a chance we end up green-white life gain instead of black-white. Or we can take a land like the Triome, which would go well in the black-white deck if we end up there. I don't know, it's early enough. I don't want to commit necessarily to my Heliod pick. And I'll just take the Ooze, which could still go well with Heliod's. I do like Healer Saw quite a bit if we're going to try and draft the life gain archetype. Other good cards, Priest for the Sacrifice decks. Drunk Seth kind of for the reanimation decks, but there's not too many reanimation cards, so it's difficult to put those together. There's also not too many ways of discarding Dracoseth. And yeah, some other okay cards here, Eidolon maybe. Could be okay in the life gain deck as well if we have enough enchantment synergy. But I'll take a hawk. Ooh. I do like Ranger of Eos quite a bit. If we can get something like a Soul Warden especially. And then there's a hope we can wheel Aspirants. Yeah, that seems fine. Basri's Acolyte seems good enough. Has lifelink, can make our creatures bigger, and we're kind of a creature aggro deck anyway. Pilgrim, so far we don't have any enchantments to search up. There's also Bastion and Grim Dancer, which can both potentially gain life. Yeah, I don't foresee needing to grab too many enchantments in this deck. So, between Bastion and Grim Dancer, Bastion can maybe kind of backdoor into a bit of a sacrifice theme as well. Grim Dancer, double black is a little hard to cast since the deck is going to be primarily white. So I think we want Bastion. Uh, Pilgrim only grabs Auras, so it can search up Heliods. Alright, well, Wastrider seems to pair quite nicely with Bastion. Uh, don't love Patron. Although I do love Patreon, which you can also sign up for at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Shameless plug. But for now we'll take a Wastrider. And the Femia or Patrician. Patrician is pretty nice for the life gain synergies. Ephemia could maybe work with some of our enchantments. Pegasus is another one drop we can find with Ranger of Eos, so there are quite a few options here. But Patrician seems to make the most sense. Uh, we wield timely reinforcements. I mean, it does gain life. It's kind of awkward at times. Uh, village rights could also pair well with a token from Strider or Bastion. Otherwise, we don't have too many expendable creatures. 
And we'll try a timely reinforcement, why not? Could also try like a Watley on the splash, but I think I want to stick to two colors. We wield basically all the life gain cards, no one's drafting mono red. So Revival Revenge, what does it get back? So far, I guess we've got a couple creatures it gets back between Strider, Patrician. So it's not the worst. What does Lamia do for me? I guess never mind. Now that we picked up Woe Strider, Lamia gets much better. So I guess I like Lamia quite a bit now. And Call of the Death Dweller, Eidolon. We don't have many auras. Let's go with a call. So maybe we're kind of like a black-white life gain slash sacrifice deck after all. Could be fun. Skeleton fits in that archetype. And maybe a skin witch. What does this do? Eh, maybe. And the Perilous Mirror also works well with any Sacrifice synergies. Alright, it's gotta be the Alsaid here, right? Works quite well with our Ranger of Eos. It's got Lifelink. Sigil would be tempting, we've got a decent amount of enchantments so far. Although probably not enough to make that worth it. Yeah, only have like a handful. Playcrafter can hope to wield that one. So, hopefully we can pick up some more payoffs for the life gain deck. Something like a Soul Warden, a Janice Pride Mate. Those are the types of cards we're looking for. Veto, of course, would be great. Mm, I guess Twin Blade Paladin's fine. Can get pretty chunky. Can maybe wheel Nocturnal Feeder or Formation. Ooh, Soul Warden, there we go. I mean, Oath of Kaya would have been great too. Not sure about Hushbringer. I guess we don't have too many ETB effects ourselves. Eh, we got a couple. So I'm not too high on Hushbringer, but we can maybe wheel Oath. Yeah, Ranger of Eos is looking pretty strong now. Missing a few two drops. So Janice Pride Mate would be probably our best bet. Here I don't hate Nyx Fleece Ram. Uh, Blade Juggler would also be serviceable, since we've got a decent amount of small creatures to enable it. But Ram being able to gain life each turn is pretty strong with a card like Heliods, a card like Patrician if we can gain two more life, and Twin Blade Paladin. Brain Maggots, it's an enchantment in case we pick up more enchantment synergies and we are lacking two drops, so it seems fine. And yeah, Intervention, we're pretty light on removal and this also gains life. Secluded Step would also be fine. Perfect. A nice seventh pick, a Janice Pride Mate, so the black white life gain deck seems to be wide open. I uh, don't think we're playing any of these. Yeah, double black for embodiment seems pretty rough. I'll just say draft this red card. Baron Moore's nice. And we even wield formation. Probably better than Nocturnal Feeder here. So we pretty much already have a deck after two packs, which is a good place to be. Can only improve from here. There's definitely a few janky cards in here that I wouldn't mind getting rid of. Not sure if I'm playing Hushbringer, but might as well pick it up. Conrad could be fun too. Probably better than Unbreakable Bonds. 
Yeah, like the formation, Call of the Death Dweller are pretty suspect. Three drops. And a two, I wouldn't mind getting rid of Skin Witch. Maybe Perilous Mirror. Don't know if we need Skeleton. So those are all cards I wouldn't mind upgrading. Yeah, we can probably improve the uh, Night Watch as well. Ooh, nice. Got to step. Don't have any actual dual lands, but having two cycling lands is always great. A lot of options. I'm tempted to just take the chapel, and then we'll probably wheel something out of this pack between Contempt, Omen of the Sun, Tactician, Shadow Spear. Like we're bound to get something back. And just having good mana is pretty important. And in a similar fashion, I'll take a Godless Shrine. Mire Triton would also be pretty synergistic, a decent 2-drop that would fit the curve. But again, just make sure we can cast our spells. Alright, this is an interesting one. Anointer Priest doesn't actually do as much as Soul Warden since we don't have that many tokens. We have a few, but not enough for a priest to be amazing. Lampad seems quite good. Can be a nice sack outlet for some of those sacrifice synergies and gains life. Paladin could also be okay, but sometimes it's tricky to untap it. Order of Midnight would also be pretty strong. And there's also Vicious Offering. I guess we are pretty light on removal. Yeah, I should probably take the Vicious Offering. Can also function as a sack outlet. And then we can hope to wheel Lampant, Order, maybe even Carnifex Demon if we're feeling brave. Alright, I don't think I want to risk tabling the Bloodlord. Although Conclave Tribunal is kind of perfect here. Yeah, I don't know if I want to pass up on a Tribunal. Like, we seem to be the only black-white life gain deck, but of course someone could always randomly take a Bloodlord if there's nothing else in the pack for them. But Bloodlord is maybe a bit too good to pass up here. I don't know. Tribunal's such an efficient card, deals with Planeswalkers as well. And we've got a lot of cheap creatures to convoke. And there's a decent chance we wheel the black-white card there as well. Lich's Caress gains life and kills stuff. Seems pretty good. Uh, Silver Smoke Ghoul would also be nice. Got some synergy with it. I guess now that we picked up two removal spells in a row, I can afford to take Silver Smoke Ghoul. Sure. Timurit calls it dead. Could be fine. Can eventually gain life. What does Risk the Redeemed do for me? How many tokens do we have? I guess it makes tokens itself. And we can also search it up with Ranger of Eos. I mean, the self-mill from Timurit calls it that is only really great with Woestrider. I don't think I'm playing Call of the Death Dweller. So, yeah, why not play a Riss here. Gutterbone seems fine. Ooh. Bolas' Citadel, you say? In a life gain deck? That's kind of perfect. I mean, Squire's Devotion could be fun too, but... This seems like the perfect curve topper. And then we did wheel... Tactician and Vulture. Vengeance could be a little tricky, being double black. Could also take Triome as a tapped dual land. Maybe I still take the tapped dual land here. Yeah, if we got back Shadow Spear, I would have taken it, but we got the Mire Triton, that's nice. A Lamp Hand wields. So pretty much got all the cars we hoped for, and the Blood Lord. There we go. Alright, pretty happy with how the draft went. Got all the cards we could have hoped for. The best 1-drop in Soul Warden, the best 2-drop in Pride Mates. I guess we didn't find a Veto, but... It's possible no one opened Vito, but we did get uh, Heliod at 3, so that's probably still the best 3-drop for the deck. 
And then uh, Twin Blade Paladin and Ranger are looking quite good too. And then Bloodlord and nice Bolas Citadel as our curve topper. So pretty much every part of the curve we managed to pick up the ideal card. Do have quite a few cuts to make, but there's a lot of garbage in here. Set one mana. Don't think I need skeleton. Add two mana. Skin which can go. I don't actually hate Perilous Mirrors since we have a few sack outlets now. Uh, could maybe cut the Brain Maggots. At three, I'll cut Timely. Maybe Formation. Call of the Death Dweller can go. And then at four, don't need Carrion Grub. And at five, Night Watch and Conrad, I think, can go. And then maybe keep Lamia as a big lifelinker and as a way to put uh, Ghost Rider in the graveyard. Can also put Gutter Bones in the graveyard if we already drew the Ghost Rider. So it has a bit of synergy there. So we're currently at 43. So I guess we'll cut the Brain Maggots. Maybe I cut Wrist the Redeemed here. Yeah, we don't really have a lot of tokens in this deck. So it's going to be a pretty slow process of activating Wrist to make a token and then start doubling. I guess we have a Regal Bloodlord, but that's about it. Yeah, I guess it's true that making tokens can be nice with an active Bastion or Lampad. So it's definitely not terrible, but we do need to make a few cuts. So it's probably still the best uh, option here. And then do we want formation? Yeah, I could see formation being okay. We can be a curve out deck sometimes. Probably still want 17 lands, considering two of our lands cycle, or even three of them cycle. And we want to eventually get up to five and six mana. How many life gain payoffs do we have? We have Pride Mate at two. Heliot is a big one at three. So Ghoul if we gain three, Patrician if we gain three. And then Paladin and Bloodlord, so we've got a decent chunk of life game payoffs, so I don't think I'm cutting a card like Nyx Fleece Ram, which is mostly here for the life gain enabling. And gaining life is also useful for Citadel, of course. Maybe it's the Mirror. We don't have much removal, but it doesn't kill large creatures. And I only have the two Sacrifice Outlets with Lampad and Strider. They are both pretty good with Gutter Bones as well, so that's nice. Now let's cut the Perilous Mirror. And then 17 lands. Pretty even split between black and white. So going 6-6, six, six, one cycling land each and three dual lands seems fine. Alright, I think we drafted a pretty sweet looking life gain deck here. Pretty unexciting opening hand, but I think I'm still keeping. I've got lands, a creature, and two removal spells, so hopefully the life gain synergies will follow. Definitely a close decision between holding this and playing it, but we do have Intervention, which is a decent mana sink. Ooh, Heliods. Hello there. So it's tempting to just kill Pyromancer right now before it makes any tokens. Maybe that's still the play. Or we could play Lampad into Heliod and then Intervention, which will give us a token or a counter from Heliod. I should probably just kill the Pyromancer now. Puts a counter on the Arachnir and plays a Perilous Mirror. Alright, we're flooding a little bit here. I 
I guess I'll keep up the ability on Helia just in case. Alright, well, Tribunal's the perfect answer to Hazaretz. If they attack with everyone, I get to block with Lampad here. I guess they wanted to protect our Planeswalker. Aha, uh -huh, I see. They had a pump spell. Well, I guess I can sack my Lampad now. They probably should have waited until I gave lifelink. We'll need to start drawing some non-land cards. But for now, we can answer Hazred at least. I will take a Bolas the Citadel off the top. Guess I'm chomping. This Heliod is gonna get pretty swole. And they're stamped, sadly. Am I dead? Pretty close to it. Next Fleece Ram, unfortunately, is not going to be enough here. Maybe they play around Cell the Wreckage. We'll do this together. GG's. On the play with a fine draw. I guess I want to start gaining life. Hushbringer's kind of annoying, like it usually is. Scissor opponent also on a life gain deck. We work together. We can achieve peace. Now is the time to strike. Now I've got an interesting choice. I can get rid of Bosri right away. Or I can get rid of Hushbringer and start attacking Basri. I mean, maybe that's the play. They can put counters on Pegasus, but Pegasus can block alone. So if they don't have another flyer, we should be fine. Yeah, this is a, a close call. I think I'm getting rid of Hushbringer. 
and then uh, I think I'm playing the Triome tapped, or I could hold it to cycle. I guess we already have a decent amount of lands here. Nah, I think I want to double spell next turn. Well, it's unfortunate. That's both a flying blocker and a very good card. Oketra's love is your shield. So, end of turn, probably have to sack the goats. Hope to hit like a Bolas of Citadel would be our best draw. Citadel plus Strider is a pretty sweet combo. Interesting. Well, I'm blocking. Not too attached to this Patrician anyway. Sure. Bit of a weird attack. Now Basri is exposed. I will guard your advance. That's painful. Bottoming two cycling lands and then drawing a regular land. Finally. What are we killing? I can kill Mothra here. And probably lose... I guess Nyx Fleece Ram. Although Ram is gaining me life for the Citadel. Kind of a close call. I guess I'll get rid of Lampad. Could also sack Strider, but Strider is pretty useful now to scry if I find more creatures. And it's probably going to end up trading at some point anyway. Interesting. Yeah, it's probably worth it. Hmm, this one's not super useful, but is a nice draw step next turn. Alright, so next turn we can intervention for the max amounts. So I can wait for them to attack and then in response we can intervention their patrician. So, I guess... Hmm. I mean, I could also play a Lamia after playing Intervention. Let's see, I could do it for X equals 6, go up to 9, Lamia puts me to 4. Yeah, that doesn't really work. Fine trading it for the Mire Triton. And then... 
We'll pass and see what happens. Ooh, Heliod. Heliod is great. Definitely playing this. And a Bastion too. So I can also use the Lamia as a shuffle effect here, by the way. Now Bastion for three life. I mean, it's definitely okay. Heliod can then also put more counters on a creature. Yeah, I think Bastion's probably good enough. Ghoul. I guess I can also put Ghoul in the graveyards with Lamia. That's another good target for it. And then Heliot can give Strider lifelink here. So let's start there. Alright, so probably killing the Triton, and then, I mean, I guess I could also kill the Pegasus in case they find some other flying creature later, but we should be able to race with Heliod now. So let's just kill the Triton, since the Pegasus doesn't do anything by itself, and then I can, I guess I can kill both even by sacking the token, although maybe I should have played Lamia first because now I'm wasting the Scry, but it's probably still worth it. Yeah, I could have played Lamia first, because the goal is probably to put the ghoul in the graveyard anyway. I think I also messed up here. I could have bottomed the ghoul, maybe get a land for free, and then still play Lamia putting a ghoul in the graveyard. So, giving up a little bit of value here, but I think we'll be okay. Alright, then our opponent concedes. Alrighty, I'll keep. I have yet to draw my turn one Soul Warden or Healer's Hawk into turn two a Janis Pride Mate. We're saving that one for the final boss. Don't think I'm using Tribunal on Champion of Wits here. And I'll just take my draw step. The goats could be useful for Convoke. Alright, Ranger of Eos is a good one too. Get Hawk and probably Gutter Bones. And then I'll just offer the trade, I think. So they appear to be on a blue-white flyer style deck. I see they wanted to mutate. So I can chump if they were to attack and sacrifice to deny the life gain. There's my pride mates.
and then tap, 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 tap. There's not too many sweepers in this cube. Those tokens are pretty effective at slowing down the Pride Maid beatdown, but it's only a temporary setback. Alright, so these can attack. I mean, opponent's blocking with an O2 anyway, so I could have played Gutter Bones first, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. Play Gutter Bones. Play Land. Lirios. Could s sacrifice a goat, but this turn I'm gonna play Lamia, so I think I just wait on using the Strider for now. Ooh, Alsate could give this protection from blue and kill them next turn. So that's pretty exciting. And then for now, I can put a Silver Smoke Ghoul in a graveyard, which we get to return right away. Seems good. We are going off, as they say. Ah, now they have a uh, white and colorless blocker, so the Alsate plan's no longer gonna work. But we're still in decent shape. Alright. I guess we're giving it protection from white now. Now I guess I don't mind s sacrificing stuff. Look for like a Bolas of Citadel. Maybe a removal spell. Let's sacrifice Ghoul first. Patrician's excellence. That can also just drain them to death. Not sure if I should play the Alsade right now. We've gained enough life to return the ghoul already, so... I think I'll just pass. And then... Can okay, maybe sack gutter bones end of turn two. All right, our opponent has seen enough. Well, that was quite a beating. Our synergies coming together nicely. All right, we're missing the turn two pride mates, but still a solid hand. Nice, look at that Mire Triton value. We've got a few cards we don't mind milling between Voice Trider, Ghoul, and Gutter Bones. Our opponent is ramping. 
So hopefully they don't play anything too scary. For now I can choose between Ghoul and Bastion. Could also play Step Tapped and then play Lampad. Or return Gutter Bones and play it. I think I like just playing the Ghoul, since it can attack past the Leafkin Druid at least. Aha, their own Bastion. So there will be lots of draining and gaining this uh, game. So, can't quite gain 3 this turn, but still like playing Patrician. And then next turn we should be able to figure out a way to trigger both Silver Smote Ghoul and Patrician. Bit of a suspicious attack, maybe they just are planning to cast a sweeper, find finality here. Maybe they have Witch's Vengeance, Zombie, Zombie, Vampire. Yeah, I should probably just take it. Cast a big beanstalk. I guess I need Bastion in play. And then I can attack with everyone, and then if they take three from Ghoul, that's great. If they don't, then it triggers Bastion, which triggers Patrician as well. Uh, so that's great, and then we get to Ghoul back. Yeah, that's probably a good turn here. Alternatively, I can just play Lampad, and then Lampad also gains one. And that triggers Patrician. Nah, I think I still play Bastion first. And yeah, attack with all. Why not? I'll definitely chum the beanstalk now. And druids. And a Witch of the Moors. So they really wanted that life gain trigger, I guess. This is just a 4 4 death touch. I mean, we could just kill them without ever letting them gain life off Bastion. If I attack with my two flyers, I can play Voice Strider and play Lampad, and then just sacrifice everything but Patrician, and they should be pretty dead. <laughs> GG's. Alright, the drain and gain. Plan worked nicely here. Ooh, this hand spicy. Soul Warden plus Heliots is a deadly combination. And we're up against an aggressive deck. I'm tempted to just play the Vicious Offering, that way we keep more creatures post Heliot, so we get more counters from the Soul Warden. And then for now, I guess I can even attack if I kill Pyromancer. Or I can pass. I mean, I'm definitely not trading here. Yeah, let's just kill this now. It's also Wizard, maybe they have some Wizard synergies, like Wizard's Lightning. And then play Heliot, followed by... A bunch of creatures. Tribunal also a nice answer to Phoenix eventually. And 
and Triton can also gain life. Yep, there's a Wizard's Lightning. So sadly no Soul Warden for us, but a Nyx Fleece Ram is not a bad substitute. I think we just play a Silver Smote Ghoul then, and then next turn I can go double 2-drop. And I'm fine trading this for Aspirants. Fair enough. So, Ram as a 5 toughness blocker is enough. Triton... Technically also enough as a 2-1 death touch. But we don't really want to put more counters on Ghoul. I guess putting it up to 4 power means it can trade for Loxodon. So maybe one counter I put on the Ghoul. Although I might want to use Tribunal this turn as well, to get rid of the Phoenix anyway. I can hit back for quite a bit of damage, and then of course we can use a lifelink on Heliod. Seems fine. Release the dogs, giving Aspirant flying. Alright, it's pretty strong. Now what? Do I just want to put a counter on the Silver Smote Ghoul so I can attack with it and gain more life? And then I can still put a counter on the Ram after attacking? Yeah, sure. Ooh, Ranger. Sadly, Soul Warden already died. And put a counter on the ram. And then we can lifelink defensively. It could also sacrifice it now and then get it back, but then it comes back as a 3-1 instead of a 5-3. So I'll just pass. And then we can lifelink the ram if needed. Or the triton. And then Ranger can get Alsaid, Gutter Bones, or I think we've got one more one drop in the deck. And the healer shock. Healer shock's pretty good too here. Alright, so trade block there. And then we might as well give Triton lifelink. I see. Fair enough. And then let's keep growing the Silver Smote Ghoul. And now I can lifelink and play Ranger. Looking good. And there we go. Also, it can give protection from whites to make our ghoul unblockable and attack for lethal. Alright, on the play. Sadly, missing white mana, but if we can find a single Plains Descends, is quite powerful with once again Heliot plus Soul Warden. And in the meantime, we can still play Gutter Bones and Triton, which is not a bad curve, so I'll try it. Perfect. Perfect. 
And then we'll play Heliod on three. Soul Warden on turn four, hopefully alongside another creature. Could have definitely played Soul Warden first, but it wasn't gonna trigger when playing Heliod. Bastion. So we do have a lot of options. So I could go Soul Warden into Unbreakable, or I can play Ranger and then next turn go Soul Warden into another one drop or two. Although I guess we're limited on white mana. Although getting the Soul Warden out there is kind of nice. Yeah, let's just be aggressive here. Like, our late game involves activating Heliods, getting more creatures in play with Ranger. Probably don't need to sand back the Unbreakable, but normally we would want to save Unbreakable formation until we've got a few more creatures in play. But it just lets us attack a lot better this turn. So our opponent appears to be mono black or missing a color. Depending on how many creatures they play and how many counters we get, we can play Ranger in our first main phase. And probably put the counter on Mark Triton. And then the other one can go on Gutter Bones. Oh wow. Alright, change of plans. Now we can just activate Heliod instead. And I'm not sure what I need to play around. I don't think Languish is in the cube. So... I guess just putting it on Soul Warden's fine. I didn't even notice we milled a Silver Smote Ghoul earlier. It's pretty nice. Uh, sure, let's put it on the Silver Smote Ghoul. Well, that was quite a draw. And do we have a Keeper? Pretty weak hand overall, missing a bit of lifelink synergy here. Heliod, Pride Mates, any of those would be nice. But we do have a Curve, so I think I'm still keeping. Alright, that's a better one drop. That's fine. Grixis control. Sahili does line up pretty well against some of our one toughness creatures here. And also it also can't protect from artifacts necessarily. So I think playing Patrician might be better than Ghoul if they can make multiple one ones next turn. We'll go with Patrician for now. Alright, so it's just Alsaid plus Patrician again. Mm, 
All right, Mystic is a nice value engine as well. We're one short of killing Mystic. Could, of course, always try to attack into it and finish it off with an intervention, but that seems kind of sketchy. So, probably just keep it simple. Patrician goes after Sahili. Play Ghoul. Keep up two mana for the sacrifice on Ghoul. And then uh, try an intervention to Mystic next turn. And then we can sacrifice Ghoul end of turn kind of for free if we're gonna gain at least three life next turn. Sure. Could use Alsei to protect it. Sahili still at two loyalty. I think we just let that go. And then kill the Mystic before it does too much damage. Even though we miss out on the Patrician trigger. Conjecture plus Blink of an Eye is quite a combo here. So that's going to be difficult to beat. Alright, I guess uh, we're just all in here. And then... Who goes where? All at Sahili might be overkill. Although Sahili is pretty annoying. Right, triple chump, so Sahili wants to stay alive. Now, I could always sacrifice the Alsei to protect one of my creatures, but not sure if that accomplishes much. Blink is probably getting safe to bounce Conjecture after the third chapter triggers. Alright, so Patrician. Alsei and Gutterbones could go. At Sahili while Ghoul goes face. Although maybe I should just send everyone at Sahili. Because of course Blink is going to make another blocker here too. Yeah, the Sahili has soaked up a million damage. And then I'm fine sacking the Alsaid now. And now this also has protection from the token. I need to iterate. I'm not gonna like what's gonna happen next turn. I could sack Silver Smoke Ghoul, but I've only gained two life this turn, so I'm not getting it back unless we draw into. A card that gains life. Yeah, let's just pass. Alright, so draw four. At least Sahili's gone. We need our own card draw here. Bolas the Citadel would be excellent. Although I suspect there could be some counter spells at play too. 
Double dance with devils. And attack with three. Alright, that plays. So now I can sack the ghoul for value, so that makes sense. And then they get to take out the Basri's Acolyte as well. Alternatively, I can just sack the ghoul, leave the devil tokens in play. And then hope to just win with my patrician. Kind of want to get rid of these devil tokens. Because our deck mostly attacks on the ground, so those tokens will eventually need to be dealt with. Lamia's nice. Patricia might get countered, but I think I would rather resolve Lamia. They have another one. Eh, that's too bad. Although they did mill a voice strider at least, so that's something. We're empty handed. Although Nicol Bolas could transform next turn. And that's gonna be bad news. Eighteen cards left. I guess I'll start exiling some creatures. <laughs> Can get back gutter bones this turn. Intervention to draw to. They have 14 cards remaining. Interesting that they didn't attack with Nicol Bolas first. I be a beast when I can be a god. My knowledge is endless. Gotta go digging. Swamp is not its. Eh, it's not the worst. Who knows, maybe they end up decking here. Don't want Nicol Bolas to minus 12. That's pretty bad for me. I always 
Did we already see our tribunal somewhere? I don't think we did, so tribunal would still be an out. Maybe I'm supposed to attack my opponent's face so I can get back gutter bones. We need a tribunal. I know what so, five cards left over there. That can definitely end the game in a hurry. Pride me to draw. It's not gonna cut it. So, now Nicol Bolas. Gets to ultimate. Didn't think I'm dealing 12 damage here. Suppose I could have uh, strider at first, but it's not going to make a difference. Now we want to get rid of all our creatures that Nicol Bolas could have reanimated, but at this point it doesn't matter anymore. So yeah, in these last cards we still had a Citadel, Tribunal, forget what else. I guess I want to Scry, so I can still somehow get a useful card as my last card. Trium. Yeah, it's not a very useful card, but we know the bottom card is a, a Swamp, so it's not too helpful. So I guess we'll go out on our own terms by drawing with a Trium. Yeah, there's a tribunal. GG's. That was a fun game. Alright. Not one of our more exciting openings, but still keepable. Facing mono reds. At least the mono red matchup should be decent in theory. I don't hate just playing the Nyx Fleece Ram. And if they want to use a burn spell to finish it off, so be it. Not even attacking. Alright. Keep up Vicious Offering. Mentor. Can give Menace. I guess we'll just kill the Pyromancer then. I don't imagine my opponent's gonna have too many other Menace creatures in their deck. Ooh, Paladin's gonna be nice if we can get to it. Hold formation for the time being. Well, looks like the Paladin's just gonna take over this game. Uh, I could play Acolyte or I just keep up Formation to make this indestructible in case they try and mess with it, and this is just gonna win the game by itself.
Do I care about that? Not really. Yeah, this Paladin is just going to be lethal in one or two attacks. If they play blocker end of turn, we can intervention it. Alright, is this a Dracuseth incoming? I do have a Tribunal for that. Oh wow, Star of Extinction. <laughs> I saw them hover over my land, I was like, wait a second, what's happening here? Alright, let's save our creatures. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. Alright, we got to the seven wins eventually. I call this a max value draft. So we got to play the max amount of games. And we still got to win all of them eventually. Alright, that was fun. For now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.